What are we doing? Okay, what we're dealing with now is the police car chasing a speeder problem. This problem is exactly what it sounds like. This is a police car hiding behind a bush. Now this police car is sitting on the side of the road is, is looking down the road for speeders. And so as the speeder approaches at some velocity V of the speeder, this police car is going to see this guy coming. And when he's some distance D down the road, before he gets to the police car, the police car is going to pull out onto the road and start to accelerate at some rate A. Now the whole goal of this problem is to try to figure out when the police car is going to in fact catch the speeder. So we're looking for time, how long that's going to take. Ultimately what we want to do is we want to find the, the time when they're positions of these two vehicles are the same. That's going to be when the police car catches the speeder. So we're going to use the kinematic equations and we're going to apply those equations to each individual car. So first let's look at the speeder. The speeder starts back here. Let's travel along at some constant velocity vs. And we have to choose where to say the origin is in this problem, or a position of zero. I'm going to choose to say where the police car starts is a position of zero. You could just as easily say the position over here is zero. And we'll talk about how that'll change things if you chose to make this zero. The speeder is going to have some position as a function of time, given by the position equation in the kinematics. So his initial position is going to be negative d. The velocity is vs, so we're going to have a vs t for position. Now there is no acceleration. The speeder is moving at a constant velocity. So we're going to have plus 1 half times 0 t squared. And you can see this term is 0. So we have this function for the position versus time of the speeder. Now let's do the same thing for the police car. We're going to use the same kinematic equation again. And this time we're going to apply that equation to the police car. Now the initial position of the police car is zero. The initial velocity of the police car is zero. Remember, he's starting at rest. He's hiding behind a bush shooting radar at speeders coming down the road. We're going to have vi is 0 times t. Well, that term is going to be 0. Plus, we're going to have 1 half times the acceleration of the police car multiplied by time squared. Now, realize when these two vehicles are at the same position, these two equations are going to be equal. So the whole point of this problem is to solve for when or at what point in time the two vehicles are at the same position. So let's take these two equations and set them equal to each other. We're going to say the position of the speeder needs to equal the position of the police car. So I'll substitute in these two functions over here. Now to solve for time, we simply need to use the quadratic equation. So we'll rearrange this to put this in a little bit more familiar order. Now you'll see here, we have this function here. We're going to use the quadratic equation to, to solve this. And what's important to realize is we have our standard terms that we put in the quadratic equation. A, B, and C. So we'll write out the quadratic equation. 
subbing in these necessary terms. And then we'll clean this up a little bit. Now that we have this function here, it looks like we have a result. We have a function for time where if we knew the velocity, the acceleration, and the distance between these two vehicles, we could solve for the time. But there's a catch here. And the catch is right here. The quadratic equation always yields two results. In this case, there's a physical meaning to those two results. So let's talk about what those are. In order to understand what these two results mean, we need to look at a graph showing the position and time for the two vehicles. Now, when we look at the speeder, the speeder starts at some position of negative D and travels forward at a constant speed. A constant speed on a position versus time graph It's going to look like a diagonal line. The police car. Well, the police car is, is starting at a position of zero and speeding up. So this police car, that function is going to look a bit like a parabola. you'll notice there are in fact two points when the police car and the speeder are at the same position. This first point is when the speeder is passing the police car. The second point is when the police car is catching the speeder. We want the latter of the two results. This is our correct answer right here. This, that is not the correct answer. This is when the police car is getting passed. So what that means for us is we want to take this function and we only want the latter of the two results. What that means is the correct answer to this problem is the positive of these two. Now, earlier on, I mentioned we could have called this position zero. And let's look at what that would have changed. Had I had chosen to call this position where the car began a position of zero. The speeder would have had an initial position of zero, but the police car would have had an initial position of positive D. That would have changed this term and this term. Ultimately, all it would have done is taken this D and pulled it over here, which wound up happening in the next line anyway. I want you to realize where we choose to call a position of zero is arbitrary, it does not affect the time at which the police car catches the speeder. Now calling a position of zero here would have shifted our horizontal axis down to this line right here. It would have shifted this line down or effectively these two graphs up. But it would not have changed the points in time when they're at the same positions. And that is the police car chasing the speeder.